correlated or not correlated? Have you ever wondered if a relationship possibly exists between two variables? What is statistical method should be used to measure the strength of relationship between them? Hello, SciPals! I am Ma'am Richelin Pagana, your science teacher for today. In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we are going to discuss the Person Product Moment Correlation, PPMC, commonly called Person Correlation or Person R. We will determine the assumptions before utilizing the PPMC in analyzing data. We will also calculate and analyze the person correlation between a given pair of variables. Finally, we will determine the significance and limitations of person correlation coefficient in interpreting data. In the next few minutes, we will explore science for another a moment! Remember, inferential statistical procedures are generally categorized into parametric and non-parametric tests. Parametric tests are used only if a normal distribution is assumed. The most widely used tests are the t-test, analysis of variance, linear regression, and person R. The person product moment correlation coefficient, person's correlation for short, is a measure of the strength and direction of relationship that exists between two variables measured on at least an interval scale. A person's correlation attempts to draw a line of best fit through the data of two variables, and the person correlation coefficient indicates how far away all these data points are from this line of best fit. When you choose to analyze your data using person's correlation, part of the process involves checking to make sure that the data you want to analyze can actually be analyzed using person's correlation. You need to do this because it is only appropriate to use person's correlation if your data passes four assumptions that are required for person's correlation to give you a valid result. Assumption 1 your two variables should be measured at the interval or ratio level. Examples of variables that meet this criteria include revision time, measured in hours, intelligence, measured using IQ score, exam performance, measured from 0 to 100, weight, measured in kilogram, and so forth. Assumption 2. There is a linear relationship between your two variables. Whilst there are a number of ways to check whether a linear relationship exists between your two variables, we suggest creating a scatter plot, where you can plot one variable against the other variable, and then visually inspect the scatter plot to check for linearity. A scatter plot may look something like one of these. If the relationship displayed in your scatter plot is not linear, you will have to either run a non-parametric equivalent to person's correlation or transform your data. Assumption 3. There should be no significant outliers. Outliers are simply single data points within your data that do not follow the usual pattern. For example, in a study of 100 students' IQ scores, where the mean score was 108 with only a small variation between students, one student had a score of 156, which is very unusual and may even put her in the top 1% of IQ scores globally. The following scatter plots highlight the potential impact of outliers. 
presence correlation coefficient is sensitive to outliers, which can have a very large effect on the line of best fit and the presence correlation coefficient. Therefore, in some cases, including outliers in your analysis can lead to misleading results. Therefore, it is best if there are no outliers or they are kept to a minimum. Assumption 4. Your variable should be approximately normally distributed. In order to assess the statistical significance of the person correlation, you need to have bivariate normality. A bivariate normal distribution is made up of two independent random variables. Ah! Let us calculate and analyze the person correlation between a given pair of variables. A researcher would like to determine if a correlation exists between the age of selected tricycle drivers and their respective glucose level at 0.05 level of significance. The collected data is presented in this table. Step 1. Make a chart. Use the given data and add three more columns, xy, x squared, and y squared. Step 2. Multiply x and y together to fill the xy column. For example, row 1 would be 43 times 99 equals 4,257. Step 3. Take the square of the numbers in the x column and put the result in the x squared column. Step 4. Take the square of the numbers in the y column and put the result in the y squared column. Step 5. Add up all of the numbers in the columns and put the result at the bottom of the column. The Greek letter sigma is a short way of saying sum of or summation. For the last step, use the following correlation coefficient formula. From our table, summation of x is equal to 247, summation of y is equal to 486, summation of xy is equal to 20,485, summation of x squared is equal to 11,409, summation of y squared is equal to 40,022. N is the sample size, and in our case, N is equal to 6. Substituting the values, we will get the correlation coefficient of 0 0.5298. The correlation coefficient is measured on a scale that varies from positive through 0 to negative 1. Complete correlation between two variables is expressed by either positive 1 or negative 1. When one variable increases as the other, then the correlation is positive. When one decreases as the other increases, then the correlation is negative. Complete absence of correlation between two variables would mean an R of 0. The table shows the rule of thumb in interpreting the size of correlation coefficient. Ah! Let us now determine the significance of person correlation coefficient by comparing the person correlation computed value with the tabular or critical value. The significance of correlation coefficient could be tested using the table of critical values of person's R. If the computed R is equal to or greater than the tabular R, then there is a significant correlation. The computed R is compared with the tabular value with a degree of freedom at a specified level of significance. To determine the degree of freedom, subtract 2 from the number of word observations. Since the number of word observations is 6, subtracted by 2, the degree of freedom or DF is 4. So, the person coefficient critical or tabular value is 0.811 Since the R computed value of 0.5298 is less than the R critical value of 0.811 accept the null hypothesis 
Since the distribution of R is symmetrical, when R is equal to 0, the sign of R is ignored, and thus the absolute value is used. Based on the rule of thumb for interpreting the size of a correlation coefficient, there is no significant correlation between the age of selected tricycle drivers and their respective glucose level at alpha 0.05 level of significance. Ah! Correlation has a lot of benefits, and it is still a good starting point in a number of different cases. But it is important to know its limitations as well. A correlation coefficient can only tell whether your two variables have a linear relationship. The correlation coefficient will only detect linear relationships. Just because the correlation coefficient is near zero, it doesn't mean that there isn't some type of relationship there. The other thing to remember is something most of us hear soon after we begin exploring data, that correlation does not imply causation. Just because X and Y are correlated in some way does not mean that X causes a change in Y or vice versa. Here is an example for this. If we look at two variables, number of flat tires and milk tea sales, we know intuitively that there is no way one variable has a cause and effect impact on the other. However, both the number of flat tires and milk tea sales will have greater numbers in summer months, so they will be strongly correlated with each other. Be careful not to fall into this trap with your data. Just after finding correlation, don't draw the conclusion too quickly. Take time to find other underlying factors as correlation is just the first step. Find the hidden factors, verify if they are correct, and then conclude. Ah! In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we discuss the Person Product Moment Correlation, PPMC, commonly called Person Correlation or Person R. We determine the assumptions before utilizing the PPMC in analyzing data. Assumption 1. Your two variables should be measured at the interval or ratio level. Assumption 2. There is a linear relationship between your two variables. Assumption 3. There should be no significant outliers. Assumption 4. Your variable should be approximately normally distributed. We calculated and analyzed the person correlation between a given pair of variables. The correlation coefficient is measured on a scale that varies from positive to zero to negative one. Complete correlation between two variables is expressed by either positive one or negative one. When one variable increases as the other, then the correlation is positive. When one decreases as the other increases, then the correlation is negative. Complete absence of correlation between two variables would mean an R of zero. Finally, we determine the significance and limitations of person correlation coefficient in interpreting data. Based on the rule of thumb, a significant positive and negative correlation exists when the computed R value is greater than the tabular or critical R value. A correlation coefficient can only tell whether your two variables have a linear relationship. The correlation coefficient will only detect linear relationships. Just because the correlation coefficient is near zero, it doesn't mean that there isn't some type of relationship there. The other thing to remember is something most of us hear soon after we begin exploring data, that correlation does not imply causation. Ah! That's all for today, Cypals. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you again next week for another um, moment only here in Agham Alam Hub 
pala dyan sa SciTech Portal. Bye!